All right. Well, at the magic 300 number, I think we should go ahead and get started. Okay, great. Well, I'll ask my colleagues to just go on mute um, for now. All of our participants, all of our members and member leaders are automatically muted now. Um, but I do want to say welcome. Thank you so much for joining AEW today. Uh, just so that we can talk a little bit more about what the impact of this crisis, this pandemic, is facing both the nation, the world, and most assuredly AEW. So we want to be able to share with you where we are, uh, where we're going, and, and certainly answer any questions that you may have or comments or suggestions. So I do have some notes here that I'll refer down to, uh, but I'll try and continue to look right at you throughout this. Um, I have said a couple of times, as is Shannon, but for those of you just joining us, um, you are all on mute, uh, yet you are able to use the chat feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. All you need to do is click on the chat box and you'll be able to input a question or comment uh, and you'll see that posted. And then at, as we continue through this at the end, we'll try our very best to answer as many questions as we can. Um, I want to congratulate my colleagues also on dressing today as we're all getting uh, used to working in our yoga pants at home in this very odd new normal. Uh, so this is, I actually put on a suit jacket today and it feels really good. So nice to see you all as well. So what we're going to do here today is talk through uh, in, in, in real terms of what we're all dealing with. The nation and the world is reeling right now. We're all uh, frantically updating our news sources, trying to figure out what's going on, how long it will be going on, and what happens next. And certainly what it means, obviously, for our health, for the health of our families and our communities, and also for the economy and what it's meaning to so many people who have already been laid off and impacted by coronavirus in our nation and on the globe. So very, very uh, importantly, I need to say how much we're thinking of all of you. Uh, I am reaching out regularly and I'm in contact with our national staff team here. I've had the great pleasure of speaking with many of our members, member leaders and donors around the country uh, via Zoom like this, via FaceTime uh, and via phone calls, as have many of my colleagues who you can see on the screen today. Um, and I apologize that we look a little bit like an old Hollywood Squares game or the Brady Bunch, but at least you can see that we're all well and working hard on our mission for AUW. We're extremely concerned about how we can take action in this incredible crisis, what we should be doing, uh, and how we can be an important voice in moving forward in this nation. I know many of our members are already reaching out to one another, and that's just another hallmark of who AUW is. And not only do we all care about this mission, we care deeply about one another, and I have been so incredibly touched to know how many branches, uh, how many individual members, state affiliates, uh, how many of you have been reaching out to personally check on me as well, which is just unbelievable with all we have on our shoulders as we think about this crisis in our communities, uh, in the states that we live in, and in the nation. And there's so much um, uh, disturbing information where some states are taking uh, uh, much more conservative approaches to really lock down and others really aren't seeing as much disruption to their lives yet. And maybe we hope will not with social distancing that's underway. But the fact that so many of you are making sure not only to reach out to your, your family, uh, your close neighbors and close friends, but really this close family of AUW too. And that has meant the world to all of us in the national office and certainly is representative who AUW has been always for almost 140 years. So in times like this, this is about the power of AUW membership. This is about the power of our mission and the sense of community that we all share. And we hope that with today's message and what we will continue to do in virtual forms as we can't get together, I'd love to hug you all personally, uh, but we cannot. So we have to connect in these ways so that we can make sure and keep what we're doing together with AUW moving forward. 
our work is actually more critical than ever before. And I don't use those words lightly. A lot of times we say, now is the time that is the most important. But when we think about a massive health crisis, as this is unprecedented, you've heard all of the, the adjectives just as I have, uncharted, exceptional, unprecedented. There's nothing quite like it. We try to talk about this in terms of the Great Recession or of uh, you know, uh, 9-11. And, and this is, is unique. It truly is a unique moment where we're seeing industries having the brakes put on them completely, uh, businesses shuttered, uh, uh, people being shuttered. When, we, when we're scared, our tendency is to want to be in communities of others, to share our dining room table and break bread with friends and family. Yet because of where we are as a nation and as a world with social distancing, this is the best we can do to break bread together and really commiserate and also put together action plans so we can feel like we're doing something in this time. So we're a strong, persistent, powerful lot of folks and COVID-19 or not, nothing is gonna stop what we are going to do at AUW now more than ever for girls and women of this nation and beyond. So I'll discuss a little bit about what AUW has been doing uh, and has done since the coronavirus uh, reared its head uh, over the past couple of months and we knew that we'd have to take action here at AUW. We'll also include some more information on how you as AUW members and leaders can support one another and support your communities as well as our national mission. The session is being recorded. I've already had some emails from folks who have asked if this session will be available. I know many of your communities are also doing special alert messaging now too. So rest assured, tell your friends and colleagues this is being recorded and will be available on your website. So let's talk a little bit about AUW's response to coronavirus thus far. First and foremost, I think it's important to say that we're remaining calm, focused, compassionate, and flexible in how we are all working and addressing this issue. All of your, my colleagues that you can see on the screen right now are in constant daily, if not sometimes hourly, contact with our fellow colleagues in the national Hi. office. As we prepared to go to mandatory telework, meaning no one is in the AUW office, all of us have the ability to work from home so that we can work safely, uh, both for ourselves and for AUW, but very importantly for our families and loved ones too. So all of our staff are working remotely, but I've been primarily focused on the safety of our staff and the well-being of our members too, and what we can do to make sure we're lifting everyone up in again, this unprecedented time. So we moved our staff to mandatory telework on March 16th. And we initially had that for a two week period that just yesterday I extended to April 24th. Now why April 24th? Because we are seeing the compounding of this virus uh, every day with new numbers that seem to just grow and grow. And all of you have read the same news reports I have um, and listened to the experts about flattening the curve. Yet sadly, in this city where we reside, where the cherry blossoms are in full bloom and spring is upon us, too many people have not in the slightest been practicing social distancing. I know we're seeing that on our nation's beaches. We're seeing that in grocery stores. We're seeing that in our city parks and dog parks and the like. And uh, frankly, we have to maintain social distancing if we are going to flatten this curve. For that, we know. We're seeing differences in the way that other nations are responding to this. And I hope that as a people here in the United States, we look more to South Korea than we do to other nations uh, that perhaps have not put the brakes on fast enough. So as we move the AUW staff to telework on March 16th, and as I said, we'll work remotely until at least April 24th, uh, but we'll keep the staff and you apprised of any additional changes there. There have been lots and lots of communication. This portal right here, which we'll talk about on today's call, Zoom has been a lifesaver, as has for our team, Microsoft Teams, where I'm regularly getting, you can see my colleague Kate in red in the middle of the screen here. And Kate has a beautiful uh, baby boy. She, she and a couple other colleagues are posting 
adorable baby photos, dog photos, uh, silly jokes, um, uh, article readings and the like that we can all share so that we feel like we still have that office community. Um, we're also tomorrow hosting a virtual brown bag lunch. We're essentially having an all staff meeting over Zoom, just like you're on today, and we'll have lunch together and go through our all staff agenda of what we're working on, what we're doing again in this uncharted time. I want you to know that Connect, AEW Connect, is available and working. You can simply email connect at aauw.org and Angie and the team will be on it to make sure you're getting your questions answered. But please do understand, given the circumstances, uh, I for one have a new husband of one month today, two dogs, a cat, uh, and a tween who's trying to do distance learning at home. So to say that my home has become either a tragedy or a comedy is an understatement. And so know that all of our staff are working in really unique circumstances with young children, animals, uh, trying to figure out space to work with uh, siblings side by side with us or roommates or the like. So do be patient uh, with delays in any responding. We did send an email to all member leaders on March 11th and to all members on March 14th. We hope you also received the combined mission and action uh, newsletter as well as membership matters on March 19th. And we've had a ton, as I said in the beginning, a lot of personal communication with branch and state leaders um, really up to about 45 to 60 days ago as we started talking about the potential of postponing state and regional conventions, branch programs, um, and other AEW events. Uh, so with all states and regions that are hosting conventions or celebrations or anniversary celebrations, we have been talking with them and helping them as much as we can contractually given state laws uh, and their own contracts to postpone or cancel their large events. And I should note that all of the states have been incredibly responsive in this, and I know have been in contact with all of you. Enormous thanks for really making sure that you can keep AUW going at a regional level, uh, but truly want to thank you for being proactive in working so hard to postpone or cancel these events that you've been working on for months and months and months. I strongly, strongly recommend that if you have any additional branch programming that is currently planned, even if it's just a gathering of six people to talk about a book, please do these virtually for the month of April. And I strongly urge you to consider that for the month of May as well. We're moving in real time here, folks. You know this, I know this. And the numbers and data will change daily. So staying on top of it, keeping social distancing, keeping yourself, your loved ones, your friends and neighbors safe is of the utmost importance to all of us here. As of now, I know many of you have asked if we are canceling or postponing the National Conference of College Women Student Leaders. That's Nick Whistle and my colleague to my right in the Hollywood Squares. Uh, actually, yeah, I guess it's to the right of everybody. Hello, Gloria uh, is working with us. We're in daily contact with the University of Maryland. Uh, we're following what Governor Hogan of the state of Maryland is doing as well, which in many ways has been leading more uh, than a lot of what we're getting from the federal government right now in terms of what we should be doing, how and when. But we haven't yet, as of today, postponed or canceled Nick Whistle, uh, which is at the end of May. But I promise you we will keep in very close touch. This is both a health and safety precaution and also very much a financial consideration. So I do need you to understand and be patient with us as we try and navigate this out, knowing that Nick Whistle is just two months away now. We're also, uh, I want you to know too that this is the first, as I said in the beginning, of many that will be essentially convenings like this, where we can come together, talk about issues, share information on what we're working, but then we hope also provide webinars on particular issues, such as how to get out the vote when you can only work with folks virtually. Uh, we'll be launching the new AUW website in the beginning of April, and we'll be delighted to be sharing that with you and rolling it out through a new Zoom webinar soon. And at the very bottom, 
uh, is my friend Laura Siegel, whose communications team is working around the clock to get all those pages loaded, and you will learn more about that very soon. And oh, by the way, Equal Pay Day is right around the corner. And as you can imagine, in the coalition of all of the women's organizations and equity organizations that work together on behalf of Equal Pay Day and the many other Equal Pay Days to represent women in color, uh, women of color throughout the calendar year. We are changing the way that we're talking about Equal Pay Day this year uh, because of the sensitivities of where we are and what this means. Because certainly coronavirus is a massive health risk for us all, but as I've said, it's also an issue of economic security, access to things like paid leave and sick leave, fair scheduling, um, and just basic human decency, which we'll be talking about as well. So be sure to know that we'll be sending out more information about Equal Pay Day and other webinars and conference calls uh, to come. Uh, we're also creating new content for working women and men and humans that are non-binary. And why we're doing that for folks who actually are interested in equity and inclusion, these are folks largely kind of ages 21 to 45 who are in the workplace, but maybe haven't engaged as a member in any way, but they could have been involved at their college campus on inclusion and equity issues. They're now in the workforce and they're looking for more professional development. They're looking for more ways to engage with others and network uh, together to help move the American workforce to a more inclusive one. So we'll be starting underneath the equity network umbrella of AUW, new efforts to create digestible, you know, kind of 20 minute to 30 minute professional development opportunities for them that will all be put together virtually. And this has to be relevant and important to their interests. And I, I can't emphasize that enough, that the American workforce right now is very reasonably scared and worried about their futures. So whatever we can do to help them to learn how to advocate on behalf of themselves, um, what to look for, how to develop themselves in a variety of ways, including around our salary negotiation programs and more, uh, we'll be really delighted to do that work. So given that um, all of our state conventions and regional, some of our regional conventions have already been postponed or canceled, we'll also have a session devoted entirely to what had been previously planned from the national office around our state convention message, kind of the state of the association or the state of AUW as we typically do at state and regional conventions each year. So more to come on that soon. Uh, we'll be providing that via video and we'll also stream that to all of you. So let's talk a little bit, and I'm gonna take a sip. I promise you I'm not sick, but because the blossoms here are so many and so beautiful, and this is uh, very much a green area in the nation, the allergy season is upon us. So excuse me one moment. Don't make any references to me like Marco Rubio drinking water from a few years ago, but I needed a sip of tea. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about why our math mission matters now, as it always, always had. Gender equity for women and girls, as we think about those who've already been impacted, think of the nursing industry, which is 98%, 92 to 93% actually now, made up of women and what they're facing on the front lines of this pandemic. Think about all of the women and women of color working in service and hospitality sectors and our nation's restaurants that have been shuttered and they've been laid off. Uh, at best case furloughed, uh, typically laid off, and they don't know where their next paycheck is coming from as they wait for unemployment to kick in. How can AUW play a part in this? Certainly around health and safety, uh, most definitely around paid leave and the importance of paid leave and sick leave for all in the American workforce today. Uh, child care issues, this is a biggie. Just in our region uh, this week, the governor of Virginia announced that Virginia public schools and private schools will be closed through the end of this academic year. Now, for so many parents that don't have the opportunity to work from home, what are they to do without ample planning or resources, both monetary and human resources, to help them weather this and fill that gap? This is a critical, critical family security issue that AUW will be a part of. 
Fair scheduling, as I said, for so many of our nation's hourly workers, they simply don't get enough time to be able to take into account child care or elder care because there's not enough advance notice of when they'll be working. Think about the folks that are delivering groceries or working on behalf of Amazon and other industries right now uh, that are getting flooded with requests. What do their schedules look like? How are they able to make sure the health and safety of their own families, let alone the health and safety of the American customers they're serving? Certainly equal pay is gonna to continue to be a massive issue that we can work on right now, today and tomorrow. And then most assuredly, as we think about so many schools shuttering, what does this mean for student debt and student debt relief? We know that this nation's economy is and will continue to be affected by this great global pandemic. But how can we make sure that those who are most at risk are getting the help that they need? And then finally, I want to emphasize voting rights and census rights. Many of you have probably already received your census in the mail, and I was so proud to be able to fill it out with my family and make sure that we're counted. How do we ensure both that all Americans that are eligible to vote are able to vote in this time where we're essentially using virtual advocacy to help make sure voices are counted in the census and that uh, voices get to the voting box in November. So we'll be talking more about that as part of our entirety of our agenda at AUW now during coronavirus and well after. I also need to shout out to so many of you who are telling us and letting us know about what you're doing in this crazy time of coronavirus and hearing how so many of you are already out cooking meals for young families that are working around the clock, uh, providing for your neighbors, making and knitting masks um, out of your own materials and providing them to community centers and to healthcare providers. This is who AUW is, and I could not be prouder. Uh, and I got misty-eyed reading about so much that all of you are already doing to help your own communities. So we can give you a little bit more on that and some other ideas of ways that you can help too. So one, I want to reiterate Zoom video conferencing, which we're using here today, because why? It's a magic price tag of free. You just go to zoom.us. There are lots of tools and tips on Zoom's website, and also you can find more on YouTube. If you're not as savvy with working some of this, uh, I know I had to uh, learn how to use it as well, um, but it has been a lifesaver, both for us uh, with our staff. It's also a lifesaver in connecting to your own family members too. So do consider using that as a way that you as members can support other members as well as your community. You can have your branch and state meetings this way. You can do programming or just simply chat, do a virtual happy hour together or have a brown bag lunch together so you can see each other and you won't feel so isolated from your family and friends and your AUW family. Many states and branches have already been using these uh, digital tools for a long time. Uh, and so some of them are also obviously using email, Facebook, newsletters, phone calls, and other social media devices to just simply stay connected. We're human beings, whether you consider yourself an introvert, an extrovert, or some combination therein, uh, all of us are missing and desperate for human connection, and this provides some avenue towards that. Since this situation is so different in how our communities, our states uh, are responding to this, you can also reach out and work as a branch or a group of members together to help collect regional resources and share them with others, your members, as well as within the community. I know many of your local newspapers may be doing this, but this is a great thing that you can collect to and put out on your Facebook page or do a webinar around. Um, for example, in New York City, they've sent out tons of emails as well as using Twitter and Facebook and Instagram uh, and other devices to send all of the local resources for New York City and for the five boroughs, um, but also links to the CDC and the World Health Organization and others. So that's another way. Not everybody has access or to kn knows where to look for resources. You know, how are you getting delivery for seniors for food in your community? What about medicine deliveries? What have you? You will know that better than we can know at the national office what your community offers but that's a great service AUW can be doing right now for our members um, as well as for your community. 
One way to get information out here is to not only use Zoom, uh, which we're using today, but is to set up a phone tree. And I know you're probably, many of you are nodding that, yeah, yeah, we do that. But now is a great time to continue doing it. We need this human connectivity right now. And I want to especially thank Shireen Chen and Amy Anderson from AEW Marin, who shared with us and brought to our attention what they've been doing there. And I know several other branches are doing it as well. Setting it up is really simple. It's not hard at all. You just email your members to find out if they'd like to help to call members and check in on how they're doing. Once you have a list of volunteers, you just assign folks five to 10 people that they'll reach out and call. You can give them a small script about asking how they're doing, if they have any needs, if they've received their information from you, and then just simply write up the notes so that your branch knows how people are doing, and it gives you an easy way to be able to deploy resources uh, and help folks within your own branch or your own community. Do make sure and ask your volunteers to report back on how the phone calls go. I know for me, I benefit from every phone call I make. I miss connecting with human beings and hearing your voices and hearing how you're doing and how you're dealing with this crisis um, is actually heartwarming for me. And it feels good to know that we're having a, a real personal conversation on how things are going. So let's talk also about ways that members can help to support AEW and our mission. Given that we cannot do anything in person right now, it's just simply not feasible and we don't know when it will be feasible and right and safe for us to be conducting in-person programs. So we're turning a lot of our attention right now to work smart online. And that is the negotiation training program that you all know well, but we do encourage you to go to salary.aauw.org. We'll be doing some virtual trainings around it as well that again, my colleague Gloria will be working on with her team. Um, but it's a great opportunity for folks that just simply can't download another Netflix show and want to get something that stimulates their brain and some learning in some way. Uh, and these are programs as well as many of our other programs that can be done virtually. You can promote this in your community as a free resource. Uh, turn and help people to turn to professional development, maybe recent grads, maybe your scholarship recipients, um, your nieces, nephews who are going bananas as they're being sent home from college and not sure when they're gonna get back to their campuses. It gives them something else in the preparedness uh, once this crisis is over of how they can be better prepared in the workplace. So please consider doing that as well. And it really is lucky that we can do so much together virtually. I am blessed by it every day and by my wonderful colleagues you can see on the screen today, as well as the 40 to 45 other staff we have at AUW. But there's so much more we can do beyond the programs we've talked about. As I said, voter education, a great way to do that. Our colleagues at the uh, AUW Boise chapter in Ohio or Idaho have been doing this for a long time and have great resources on how they're getting out the vote. Uh, you can engage in online platforms. You can do telephone or Zoom town halls just like this. Encourage people uh, to go ahead and register to get their absentee ballot. I did that for my mom recently and she felt so much better knowing that she has an absentee ballot now and her vote will be counted. We can also do a lot of advocacy without having to march to our state legislatures or on, uh, here on Capitol Hill. So there's a lot we can do via emails and phone calling. You can call and email your elected officials right now um, and talk to about them about our gender agenda and what we're working on all in the context of coronavirus and more on that soon too. Certainly, we can also advocate with our voices to our local media as well and regional media with op-eds we could write about what this is meaning, what coronavirus and what economic security means to women in our communities. We can work on letters to the editors about not forgetting what student debt relief will mean in the entire context of coronavirus and why pay equity is more important than ever before. If you need help on that, certainly reach out to the Connect team uh, and we'll be happy with our policy team and research team and communications team to help you in those efforts. 
We can also, as you know, our office, I can tell you, Kate Nielsen has been saying she's as busy as ever. She's not slowing down at all. Uh, and she and her team, I'm really grateful from a grassroots level to a federal level, are really making sure that AUW's voice is being heard. So you can help to uh, sign on letters to strengthen bills in Congress or strengthen bills within your own state, reiterating policy areas where we're focusing, like the ones we've talked about already, like paid leave, pay equity, student debt relief, and more. Um, and really making sure that we're advocating for the principles for voting rights. So many are going to feel disenfranchised over the coming months, given what coronavirus is meaning as a disruption to our lives and to our bank accounts already. You can also consider giving to AUW's greatest needs. We've been talking about greatest needs now for a couple of years and the importance of unrestricted, flexible giving. Again, Last summer, when we announced our budget and we moved forward our agenda for this year, do you think anybody on this team anticipated dealing with a global pandemic? No, we did not. We do not have unlimited resources, and we are honestly uh, concerned about what this will mean for American philanthropy. So please, if you still are as committed as we are, all of the staff here on today's call, as well as everybody working in their home offices today in AUW's national office. We're committed to making sure we're advancing gender equity, but we need your help in this. You can only imagine how much the nonprofit sector is going to be affected by a downturn in the economy, and we really need your support now more than ever. If you want AUW's voice during coronavirus, during a potential recession and an economic downturn, and what this means for all of us, for all of our women and girls in this nation and on this planet. Please help us now. There's a lot of expected turmoil here, but AUW's work must and will continue. So in wrapping up here today, I think what I want to reiterate and make sure you're all hearing loud and clear is we are calm, we are focused, Focused, and we are working hard on behalf of AUW's mission, our outstanding members in every congressional district in the United States and U.S. territories, and we're committed to getting more done with your help. The Connect team and the National Office are available to you. Uh, we do sometimes look like we just got off of a yoga mat because we are working from home, but I can assure you we're actually probably working even harder and more as we are more focused than effort on what we can do together. We'll be sending out more information too on future webinar offerings, uh, future online programs and the like, and we're gathering all of that in real time right now. This crisis is happening in real time, and we want to make sure that we're responding as such in relevant, timely ways to keep moving forward. I want to urge you all to keep your spirits up. Please stay positive. Do something each day that makes you laugh or helps you fill your air, the air in your lungs so that you can take deep exhaling and important breaths. We're all in this together. We want you safe and committed and with us for many, many years to come. So please continue to practice social distancing. And if you're feeling isolated or lonely, reach out to us, reach out to family and friends, put together a virtual happy hour and make sure that you're taking care of your soul just as much as we're all taking care of our nation at this time. So let me now ask my colleague Shannon if we have any questions in the queue uh, or if there's any comments that we should address from our AEW members. Great, thanks Kim. Um, we had one request to repeat the website for salary, so we can go ahead and do that. Do you wanna do it? Clearly, clearly I am very well caffeinated uh, <laughs> in this crisis, so sometimes I speak too quickly. I apologize. That uh, address for WorkSmart Online, visit salary, S-A-L-A-R-Y, dot A-A-U-W dot O-R-G. Is that better, Gloria? Very <laughs> nice. Um, we had a question about um, any advice for states that are trying to get out of their contracts for the state conventions, and probably that would be useful for other folks to hear about as they have other branch programming. Yeah. 
Yeah, I really urge you to work with them around postponing. Look, everybody is worried about their bottom line budget. So this is sadly a little bit of a game of chicken right now. And I hate to use that analogy, but that's where we are. Uh, hotels and sites are looking to keep as much revenue as possible, just simply to keep their doors open and keep their staff paid. Certainly for us, we want to make sure we can hold on to our important coffers to do the mission work that we're doing at a branch and state level and, and definitely at the national level. So some is to suggest and say to them, uh, are you considering one? Well, actually, let me back up. One is know what the current state of, of uh, ruling is in your municipality or your state, right? Some states are leaning in and doing much, much more about stopping any convening for a period of time. Uh, some are doing a little bit less. So most definitely make sure you know where your state is in terms of shelter in place, social distancing, and how many people can be gathered at one time in a public event. So definitely know where you are in your city or state right now. Secondly, is reaching out uh, to uh, the, the group that you signed with, whoever that, whether that's a hotel or a restaurant uh, or a, a meeting space, and talk to them about the potential for postponement. Talk to them about how they are dealing with where we are right now for health and safety and what options we have. And then try and work on this. There may be some compromises here. I can't lie to you because I don't know what every one of your individual contracts look like. But if you have real issues and you're, you're really flummoxed by this, you can also reach out to me and to the Connect team and we'll do our very best to help you once we can review your contract to help you with some of your options. Great. Um... We had a question come in about um, the fact that we have WorkSmart online, but what are we thinking about in terms of dealing with smart, Start Smart while folks, um, our students are really not on campus? Gloria, can you maybe talk about your, your feelings about that? Sure. Um, we are already working with uh, Universities that have Start Smart contracts, they have been in contact with us about doing um, live and virtual Start Smarts, and we're actually working on a curriculum so that they can continue to utilize the curriculum with their students while they're away from campus. Great. Yep. Thanks, Gloria. I also have a couple of questions here about the website, um, which I'll ask Laura to take. Uh, maybe Laura, you can just go over a little bit about where we are with the website. And I think specifically folks are interested in how that interacts with their um, state and branch pages. Sure, we're really excited. We've been working hard for um, uh, the better part of uh, six months or more getting the site up and, and ready and we should be launching it the week of April 6th. We'll send out a lot more communication and detail on it. Um, obviously we wanted to have a little bit more fanfare around it but with all the conflicts uh, and things going on right now um, we will get different messages out um, in relation to the COVID-19 and, and other communications that we have. Um, we are really excited about the look and feel of the site and how hopefully it's uh, easy to navigate, highly visual. Um, it's built to be uh, accessible for, um, it's ADA accessible um, at the AA level, which we're really excited about as well. Um, and so the launch will, will be around that week. We will not have yet gone through to the second phase where the MSD and um, other member components behind the paywall will have been updated. That will be done a little bit later this year when we also launch the new um, content uh, or customer relation management tools and uh, CRM uh, components as well. Um, so it's kind of the phase one of the site. Um, so a lot of the things that uh, member leaders use in the MSD, they'll be uh, completely the same and on the old site. Um, where most things are linked to from external sites, from the state and local and branch sites, um, they should be uh, redirected pretty easily because if you're going to AUW and to certain pages, and we have a lot of those pages flagged, they will then be integrated or we have what's called a redirect tool where those pages will then 
be turned to or, or just be come up automatically when you put in auw.org, you'll get the new website, for instance. Um, and anything that doesn't gets caught um, in terms of a, a kind of a, a, a I guess, uh, overarching page that says, go to auw.org to find what you're looking for with a lot of the lists of the most used pages. Um, and the old site will still all be archived and usable, so we can also um, find content that may be missing, but we're really excited. I think we've concentrated the member resources, the branch and uh, leader materials, and all of that in, in a pretty usable way. So we'll uh, plan on scheduling a webinar to go over the new website as well uh, coming up. Terrific. Great, Shannon, there was a question I saw too about somebody asking what Connect is. Connect is essentially like a customer service line for AEW. Um, and you just visit, uh, the, the email address is connect at aauw.org. And then that customer service team, they'll try and answer your question right away. If they can't, they'll refer it to one of our departments, uh, depending on if it's a policy question, a communications question, programs, what we're doing, what have you, uh, and, and we'll go from there. But connect is kind of that, just kind of like if you think about a 1-800 number on the back of your bank card, that's what the connect team is, to be able to help you to outsource and, and figure out where to go within AUW. Terrific. We had a, a couple of uh, questions about Two Minute Activist. Kate, um, are you able to talk a little bit about, you know, sort of your plans with the policy team and your and your use of that moving forward? and your fabulous new hire. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, well, thank you for all of the two-minute activists that are on the line today. First and foremost, I wanna point you on our website, um, on the top banner, it says, take action. Um, and while that will be changing with our new website, we will still have an opportunity. But if you click on take action, you can see all of our, what I'd call evergreen action alerts. Um, and those are, actions that you can take, ways to get in touch with your members of Congress right now to encourage them to support or move forward critical pieces of legislation um, that we are constantly working on. So those include civil rights, economic security, and education uh, bills that we'd like to see move forward. So first and foremost, I encourage everyone to take action there. Um, as far as timely action alerts that are being sent out, we, the staff is very much on top of everything that's happening in Congress right now, which is changing minute by minute. We don't want to send out an action alert that could become stale within minutes or hours. So we're waiting and sort of holding our fire on that um, to send ones when we know that AUW members can be timely, relevant, and have the biggest impact. Uh, so you're definitely right to ask about that and be excited to take action. Um, I'll just say those will be coming when we think um, they're the best opportunity. And then just to let you in on a little bit of sausage making, we have a new staff member, uh, Robin Lucas, who's been with us for just over two weeks, um, who's our grassroots advocacy manager, who's going to be pushing out many more action alerts. Uh, we're so excited to have her on the team and to have her brain helping us think through how to best harness all of your incredible advocacy and give you all great opportunities to advocate even more. So you can look forward to more coming soon. Um, I encourage you all to stay abreast with the news and feel free to contact your members of Congress and state legislatures to encourage them to take action now. Uh, first and foremost, we wanna see these bills that are providing relief cover all people. Um, they really need to support everyone, including our most vulnerable. We need That's to provide right. paid leave, right. we need to provide childcare, we need to provide debt relief. Um, so many issues that we always work on are at the forefront right now and absolutely critical. We at National are working to make sure that those folks are covered in the bills. I encourage you to take that action yourselves, and I promise that we'll loop you in when we know that your voice can be most critical. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, okay. Kate. Um, we actually had a really great comment come in just now that said, for negotiating your state or regional conferences, use WorkSmart for ideas on renegotiating your contracts. Having recently worked on going through WorkSmart, it has the concept through its exercises. And I think that's just such a great point that it's really not about salary negotiation um, 
only, it's really about negotiation and a lot of different aspects of your life. And so um, I think that's just a really great point and um, could be really helpful for a lot of folks. That's super. Yeah. I've used, uh, I say, yeah, I use negotiations uh, with my brand new husband every day. So we all use <laughs> negotiations uh, in every part of our lives. And we should recall that the benefit of learning the skills, it's a muscle to be flexed and those negotiating skills in the work smart online uh, program absolutely can help you with those contracts. What a great point. Yeah, we just had a question come in on Zoom um, about free versus paid, um, and I can weigh in a little bit on that. Um, there is a free version that I believe allows for um, about 40 minutes of meeting, and I think you can have up to 100 participants. Um, there's also a paid version that's going to give you a lot more flexibility. So if that's something that you're interested in having for your programming, for your branch meetings, for your uh, state meetings, for, for whatever, um, definitely something to look into. There is a cost associated with that. So it's something you'd wanna really talk to your finance officer about, but um, there can be some benefits to going more than 40 minutes as <laughs> you might imagine. Um, a lot of board meetings will go longer than that. So um, something to look into, but there is a free version available that a lot of folks have already been using um, that's been really helpful for a lot of our branches and states. Yeah. Um, there is a, a question here about what do we do for high school women who are desperate in need as they might go straight into the workforce. And I can tell you a couple things on this. One, we know that as we think about uh, where we are as AUW, we've done so much to make sure to advance higher education that for a long time now, women have earned the majority of associate's degrees, bachelor's degrees, graduate degrees, and doctoral degrees in this nation. More women are moving into medicine now. Uh, we are thriving in a lot of areas there, while there still are occupational and educational segregation holding women back from attaining some educational degrees. That said, as we've been working on partnerships at the city and state level, around uh, pay equity and negotiation. We also know we need to make sure we're reaching out to those with less skills um, and less ability to be nimble in the 21st century workforce. But that comes at a cost. To develop new curriculum actually takes investments. And right now, because we're having to be very careful and cautious with our financial resources, given the expected downturn in philanthropy, given the expected downturn in the economy that we're already seeing, uh, we can't announce a new program right now. It, I, I would say to you for many high school women, my daughter who is turning 12 in a week and a half has gone through the work smart. Um, trust me, she knows how to negotiate with me already. So I, I would say all of our materials on our website are free of charge. And so certainly anybody uh, can utilize any of, of the programs right now, regardless of age or what we say that they're for. So do consider that as we at AUW are working on new programming uh, to be able to provide to the American workforce and to help all women thrive, regardless of what education level they've attained. Great. We also, um, looks like we had a comment that there are other um, resources beyond Zoom, and I think that that's a great point. Um, there's a free Skype um, application. A lot of folks are using Google Chats. There's a lot of different things you could use. Zoom is really only one. I'm not being paid to promote Zoom, I promise. Um, but uh, whatever you're most comfortable with, it's just sort of this idea that there are other ways that we can actually see each other without actually having to be in the same room together. And I really love that. Um, we received a lot of comments from the question we put out in the Membership Matters, a mission and action newsletter from last week. I think we received over 200 comments to that. And it was really great to see how many of our branches and states really were utilizing these alternative ways of communicating um, because it's so important right now that we just remain in contact and get to see everybody's smiling faces. Um, and it really does matter. It's, it's different than a phone call. Obviously phone is great if phone is the only way that you can get in touch with some of your members. Um, they don't have computers or use Zoom or use any of those uh, chat features. Um, a phone call is great, but it's also great to be able to see somebody's face and, and really make that connection as well. So whatever whatever piece of technology you want to use is, is perfectly great for that. Yeah, this is not just Zoom. I, I reiterate that. I know a lot of uh, people who have loved ones or work uh, in multinational ways are doing it through WhatsApp. 
uh, through FaceTime, you know, with limited groups, what have you. And there's a lot of other ways. There's also just the good old fashioned conference call. Um, but somehow I just think seeing people's faces really matters right now for all of us. Um, also, many of you might be elect making uh, sure that your elections can still move forward for branch and state officers. And certainly for our national election at AUW, uh, we'll still be promoting that in April. Um, and we expect since so many of us are stuck at home that we should reach quorum like that because people have the opportunity to vote from their own living room. So you'll get more information on AUW's election uh, very, very soon too. Shannon, anything else? I think that's it. Okay. Well, listen, know that um, we'll continue to be in touch. You will be getting uh, an updated, um, what we would have been presenting from the national board and the national staff uh, at state conventions and regional conventions, plus all of this additional programming we're talking about. This is just step one for us to make sure you know that your AUW national office may not be at our downtown Washington DC office address right now, but we are hard at work we are here for you and we're committed to getting through this crisis together. So I thank you all so much for joining us today and be safe and be well.